So the new year often brings along with it a chance for us to think about how we want to move forward with our lives. I believe in setting goals, but I don't think that these need to be restricted to the 1st of January. I always find that it's helpful to think about what have been your biggest struggles up until now and where you'd like to prioritize your focus from this point going forward. As a mental health professional, I've worked with hundreds, maybe even thousands of people struggling with their mental health. And although I'm not in a position right now to help everyone watching this video individually, I do think that maybe I can help you with some mental and emotional and practical things that you can do at home starting right now to be mentally healthy so before I get into this challenge, I'd like to mention a few key things. The first thing is that the easiest way to fast track your progress is to commit to doing one thing a day. But if for some reason you miss a day, just pick up where you left off the next day. We're looking for progress, not perfection. The other thing is that as our mental health is so unique to us, it's not realistic to design a one size fits all formula. So if you come across a point where that day's challenge isn't something that you'd like to do, well first I'd say at least try it. You may experience more benefit in it than you realize, but if you really don't want to, which is also perfectly fine. Think about supplementing it with a challenge from another day or bring in something that you know has worked for you in the past. So let's get straight into it. Day one. Take one day where you just focus on your energy levels throughout the day. Some people aren't naturally morning people. Other people thrive when waking up at 5 a.m. every day. That's why I don't believe that the advice to everyone to wake up before the world wakes up is a blanket rule that everyone will benefit from. But often what happens is that over time, as our lives evolve, which they do, our rhythm naturally changes. But because we're stuck in the mindset of I'm a morning person or I'm not a morning person, we miss the cues of what our body is actually telling us right now. When you spend day one just really paying attention to the times of the day that your energy and productivity peaks, and equally at what part of the day your anxiety levels increase, then you can use this going forward to either leverage the power of your energy levels to be super productive, or you can take the time when you feel anxious to do some mindfulness techniques or grounding exercises. Realistically, to get a clearer picture, you may wanna do this over a period of time, but there's actually a lot you can learn about yourself within just one day. Day two. Research grounding and mindfulness techniques and see which one you feel will work best for the next time you are struggling with your mental health. We all have times in our lives or even times of our day when our mental health is not at its peak. So for this, it's important to develop healthy coping mechanism at times when you aren't feeling as though you're in survival mode. I've done a few videos on grounding exercises and mindful techniques for optimal mental health. I'll link those in the description box for you to take some inspiration from. Day three, get in touch with somebody who you haven't spoken to in a while and tell them that you're thinking of them. This can be fantastic because not only are you making someone else feel good, but you're also potentially rekindling a relationship that may be great for you at this point in your life. Day four, do some kind of physical activity, but it has to be one that you enjoy. Is this dancing? Is it running or yoga? When you do something you enjoy, your body releases what we call happy hormones, which continue to work long after you've stopped doing the activity. And who doesn't want to stay feeling good? Day five, do something that you're good at. Now I know that this can sometimes sound a bit generic, but bear with me. When you do something that you know you're good at, you get an instant boost to your self-esteem. You get to focus on something you enjoy that is making you feel great at the same time. Similar to day four's challenge, this triggers two of your happy hormones, which actually continue with the process of reducing stress and increasing your self-esteem, motivation, and happiness, even long after you have stopped doing the activity. It's literally a win-win situation. Day six. Read 10 minutes of a book from a genre that you enjoy. This could be something you find funny, inspiring, something that improves your character, or it could even be something that offers you some escapism. Yes, you can get some of this from watching a movie, but by getting this experience from reading a book, you're providing your mind with the positive experience without the overstimulation from technology. So it can equally put your mind into a state of relaxation that you can't fully get from watching a screen. Day seven, schedule in your bedtime for 30 minutes earlier, if you can. You may not fall asleep straight away, but the additional rest will do wonders for your mind. You have more time for your mind to switch off from the day, as well as from the disruption to our minds that comes from technology and social media. I think it goes without saying here that for this to really work, your bed should be a no tech area. Day eight, watch your favorite movie. Something that makes you laugh, something that makes you cry, something inspiring, something nostalgic. Watch it by yourself or with someone that you love. Make it something that makes you feel good. And on this day, allow yourself a binge session. If it's intentional, if it's purposeful, if you have accounted for this, it can never be a waste of time. Day nine, reflect on your previous year. How far have you come? If you had made 2020 goals, then look back at these and see how far you've come. I appreciate that the pandemic derailed or delayed plans for so many of us, but I'd like you to focus on how far you've come in terms of your character. Are you braver? 
Are you stronger? Are you smarter? If this year has broken you emotionally, are you now better able to understand what your weaknesses are? Are you better able to understand what you need to do if you're ever in this situation again? Do you feel able to set more difficult and challenging goals? Or do you need to reduce the number of goals and go all in on just two or three? The fact that you're here and watching this tells me that you're in a mental space that is open to evolving. And that within itself is something to be commended. Day 10. Now that you've reflected on your life up until now, have a goal setting session moving forward. Divide your life into categories of what is more important to you. Some ideas might be physical health, mental health, finances, relationships. Then for each of these things, come up with all of the things that you would like to achieve within the category. Then choose the three goals within each category that are achievable by the end of this year. Once you have three goals for each category, write down what it is that you need to do to make it happen. Make it actionable. Think about what steps you need to take, what mindsets you need to adopt, what things you need to let go of to make it happen. Then write this up in a place that you can have as a constant reminder so that you always have a part of your mind actively on what it is that you want to achieve. Day 11, unfollow all negative social media accounts. In the long run, they can cause you to overspend, change the way you eat, they affect the freedom of your thoughts, they cause you to have low self-esteem and decrease your energy and motivation. I really could talk about this all day. There is an argument to be made that we shouldn't eliminate all negativity as it reduces our resilience by putting us into this self-imposed, almost false bubble. But to this, I would say that life will always have challenges. There are challenges that will naturally present themselves while others are ones that you invite in, or even worse, walk straight into. The latter is how I perceive negative social media influences. By eliminating unnecessary negativity, you improve your self-esteem, increase your productivity, and give your mind space for clarity and focus that you wouldn't get otherwise. Day 12, have a day of technical fasting. If you saw my video on productivity tips I learned from reading Ikigai, the Japanese secret to a long and happy life, then you will see that this is a tip that I got directly from the book. Although the authors didn't go too deeply into why this is necessary, my understanding of psychology and mental health teaches me that this is beneficial for so many reasons, including breaking the cycle of dependency and in turn the potential for addiction. I actually have a video planned on this that I think that you'll really enjoy, so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Day 13, do a digital declutter. When our space is cluttered, it affects our anxiety levels, it disrupts our circadian rhythm and our ability to concentrate. I also appreciate that a full declutter of our physical environment isn't always possible within one day. So something that is more achievable and equally as beneficial is a digital declutter. Let me know if you're interested in how to do a digital declutter and I can put this together for you. Day 14, change your life in one year by committing to a new challenge each month. This could be a 30 day running challenge, a 30 day yoga challenge, or a 30 day no spend challenge. If you can't align them to the life goals that you set for yourself earlier, imagine how much growth you will see in your life within just one year. Of course, you may not be able to stick to the challenges every single day for the next 365 days, but you will have made significant strides in the right direction. And at the very least, you will discover things that work for you and things that don't. And you may have even picked up some healthy habits along the way. Day 15, start journaling. Now this will be so unique to you and one size definitely does not fit all, but your journal focus could be goal driven or even general daily or weekly to-do list type journals. It could be a reflective practice based one or a gratitude journal. Research different journaling types and see which one appeals to you the most. Day 16, analyze your space. What space within your home do you spend the most of your time in? Now ask yourself, is this space conducive to my mental health? Is it cluttered? Is it dull and uninspiring? Do you struggle to find things within your space or are the things that you reach for daily really difficult to get to? Plan how you can change or move things around so that you operate in this space with ease and that the space itself is motivating and inspiring to you. Day 17, now change your space, keep it easy. You don't necessarily need to plan and execute on the same day. Depending on the state of how things were before, doing it all in one day might be too overwhelming. So break it into manageable steps. With this, I would say don't aim for perfection. And remember, it doesn't have to be pretty. What you need from your space can change each time that your life situation changes. So assess how your life is right now and optimize your space to fit that. And remember that you can and probably will need to change things around later. Day 18. Analyze all of your current relationships and start thinking about who you want to take forward with you. I've done a whole video on boundaries and relationships and what you need to think about when it comes to moving forward with healthy and non-toxic relationships. Day 19, do 
design your ideal morning routine and evening routine. Now I say ideal because again we are not talking about perfection. I have a super active two year old who hates to sleep but it's about having a basic framework for what you would like to get done first thing in the morning and again in the evening before you go to bed. Be realistic with how long each thing takes and give yourself five minutes extra for each element that you plan. Things never stay within accurate time frames when you're making plans so that's why you need to give yourself a bit of extra time just in case. Day 20. Now that you've designed it, execute it. Tick off as many items on the list as you possibly can. How does it make you feel? Do you feel like any of it was helpful? Which of these would you like to move forward with and which of these make you think this just isn't for me? Day 21. Choose a word for the year or month that will be your guiding force to come back to when things start to get blurry. Life will get in the way and there will be things that knock you off course. So developing resilience and coping strategies is essential. So if you have a word of the year when you're starting to fall off track, you will have a focus to bring yourself back to. My word for the year for 2020 was brave. Whenever I was presented with challenges, I reminded myself of this commitment that I had made to myself to be brave. And thanks to this, I saw incredible amounts of growth in my life last year alone. Day 22. If we weren't right in the middle of a pandemic, then I would be incorporating much more travel or exploration based goals. But realistically, we are limited and that might even be a good thing because it forces us to think about challenges that we can do right now in this moment without any forward planning. So for today's challenge, I recommend to go on a 15 minute walk to your local area, but make it by design. Here's what I mean by this. Today, I challenge you to go on this walk, but walk slower. Even consider going in the opposite direction to the one that you usually go. Notice as many things that you can that you've never noticed before. Is there a dent in that lamppost? Are the road markings faded? Is there an interesting ornament in the window of the house across the street? Don't aim to go anywhere, but teach yourself to walk mindfully. For some people this may be easy, but it may not be for others. I'm also one of those people who struggle to go for a walk without having a specific destination to walk towards. Now you can see that even a seemingly uneventful 15 minute walk can challenge some of your own personal restrictions and actually be a practice in mindfulness. Day 23. Allow yourself a day of nostalgia. Look at some old photographs or essays you may have written in the past or items that you have from your childhood and indulge in whatever feeling that conjures up, whether this is a great feeling or an unwanted emotion. Sometimes this can be powerful enough to understand your positive and negative triggers better. But if you'd like to push yourself a bit further, you can think about how much you have changed as a person since then. How much have you achieved in your personal and professional life? Then use this to think about what you'd like to continue continue to focus on, but also if there are any things that you feel like you have lost along the way, think about what you can do to start gaining some of those things back. Day 24. Think about your financial health. I don't believe that money can buy you happiness, but I do think that wealth can give you choices and opportunities that may be more difficult if you don't have money. Now our money goals are so unique based on our current life circumstances, whether this is professional or personal, but for a lot of people financial health ties in quite closely with mental health. If you'd like to learn about how to set financial goals, check out my video linked in the cards and in the description box. Day 25. Can you plan some intentional days with the people that you love? Sometimes within families that we live with, we get so used to seeing them every day that we don't feel the need to cultivate and nurture these relationships, usually because they're just there. But how can we be more intentional? Can we schedule in a games night? If you aren't currently under lockdown, can you arrange for a family trip somewhere nice? Can you plan to take your children somewhere? Or can you arrange a babysitter to take the children or you have a date night at home? It doesn't have to be a huge dramatic gesture, but it does have to be intentional. If the ones that you'd like to pour into don't live with you, can you arrange for dinners out together, a spa day or a weekend away, or at the very least a Zoom meetup? Show the ones that you've decided are good for you that you appreciate them. Do this by thinking about how to nurture closeness and intimacy and then schedule it in. Day 26. Have a tech-free morning. I appreciate that if you are working from home or have online classes, then this may be difficult for you. So try and move this to a day where you don't have to work. Allow yourself the whole morning until 12 p.m. Time without your TV, your phone, your laptop and your tablet. Then take a note of how you're feeling. Notice if you're able to get things done. Notice whether you're less stressed and more aware of your body's cue for rest, hunger or entertainment. Do you have more mental clarity? If any of you choose to do this, I would honestly love to have some feedback from you about how you felt. This one has done wonders for me and my family, so I'd love to know what your experience with this one is as well. Day 27. Find and follow positive influences on social media. Surround yourself with accounts that inspire, educate, motivate or entertain you. 
tailor these to two dimensions of your personality. The first is podcasts, YouTubers, blogs that address some of the struggles that you have right now and that help you through it. And the second is where you would like to see your life going. If you would like to take up running, surround yourself with more running content. If you'd like to learn to play guitar, surround yourself with accounts that teach you how to play guitar for beginners. Absorb things that help you improve who you are right now and absorb what inspires you to achieve what you want to achieve. Day 28. Set a timer for each hour of the day and use this time towards a positive healthy habit. This could be drinking a glass of water or doing 20 star jumps. It could be doing a breathing exercise, going for a five minute walk or reading one page of your favorite book. Whatever it is, it needs to be simple. The idea is to show yourself how easy it can be to develop a new and healthy habit. If only you actively put your mind to it. By the end of the day, you'll develop confidence in your ability to stick to a physically or mentally healthy plan. You'll learn that with the right cues and the right prompts, you can achieve the targets that you set for yourself. Day 29, have a tech-free evening. For all of the same reasons I mentioned earlier for having a tech-free morning, I didn't put these next to each other because I think that it's important to give yourself time to figure out what works best for you rather than piggybacking off of the buzz that you may have felt from the day before. By having a tech-free morning, you may have found that your productivity was higher, your anxiety levels were lower, but by having a tech-free evening, you may end up finding that you have more time for self-care, you don't ruminate as much, and you may even find that you sleep better. Knowing where your mind feels most at ease can help you when you come to deciding which of these habits, if any, you would like to take forward with you. Day 30. Decide which of these challenges you enjoyed the most and experienced the most benefit from and figure out how you're going to implement these going forward. You will have seen by now that for some of the challenges, doing them once or every so often is sufficient, but for others, doing them regularly is where the real benefit lies. So take note of which ones you'd like to carry forward with you. And if anything, you can always just do the challenges all over again. For more content on mental health, productivity, and lifestyle, make sure to hit the subscribe button and I will see you in my next one.